polls show a majority of Americans disapprove of Donald Trump's performance as president, while Republicans are more loyal to him right now than any president's own party unity since the GOP rallied around Bush after 9-11. My next guest worked many Republican campaigns but opposes Trump's uh, policies and left the party over them. That's political strategist Steve Schmidt, who joins me in a moment. Now, Donald Trump not only polarizes people's feelings, he polarizes the very perception of reality out there, and he knows it. Consider Trump today in Kansas City warning people if they don't see the economy improving with their own eyes, it's because what they see is not real. This country is doing better than it's ever done before economically, but it's all working out. And just remember, what you're seeing and what you're reading is not what's happening. While many politicians, of course, cherry pick information, Trump's blatant request that people ignore their own eyes could literally be ripped from George Orwell's famous dystopian novel, 1984, which cast partisan censorship of truth as the party told you to reject the evidence of your eyes and ears. Now, liberals have long attacked Trump as bad for working people, a con man who ran on populism but governed for the 1%, a kind of a policy thief. Another critique is that Trump is actually challenging something more valuable than property, our sense of reality itself. Consider another dystopian writer, Curtis Jackson, who said, hate a liar more than I hate a thief. A thief is only after my salary. A liar is after my reality. In fact, in that same song, there is another axiom, quote, here's a jewel, love your enemies and hate your friends. Your enemies remain the same. Friends always change. And some of the friends who know Trump best are changing. Michael Cohen, Rick Gates, Mike Flynn. Meanwhile, Trump's wider cast of political friends, if you want to call them that, Republicans who've never met him around the country, they're standing strong tonight and appear down with his reality. I'm joined by Steve Schmidt. Uh, Steve, what do you think Trump is doing? And is he aware to some degree that denying the publicly reported reality is key to his reelection? Of course, Ari, you talked about 1984. There's the famous scene at the end of the book where Winston is being tortured and the party official is holding up four fingers and says to Winston, how many fingers am I holding up? And Winston, being tortured in tears, says, I only see four. I see four. And the party official says it could be three or it could be five. It's what the party tells you it is. And so it's not just that Trump is assaulting objective truth. This is a political strategy. This is about a demand for obedience. This is the transformation of a smaller Republican Party into a cult of personality where what the leader says is true is true. What the leader feels to be true is true. And if you can subordinate reality at the command of a political leader, you are no longer functionally living in a democracy, whether it's inside the United States or not. For a faction of this country, they have surrendered their sovereignty, their intellectual autonomy to Donald Trump. Now, I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a psychologist. I can't explain why, if you were to join a cult, why he would be the cult leader that you would line up and follow. That, that being said, though, when you're able to convince somebody what is certainly true is not, when you can embrace the big lie with the same type of effectiveness that fascist movements used it, that Hitler used it, that Mussolini used it, that Soviets used it, then you are well on your way to doing grave and lasting damage to the fundamental institutional pillars of a democratic mm. republic like the United States. And this president does not stand accused uh, of the conduct of some of those regimes. But with regard to the information there, the propaganda efforts, this seems to be where uh, Trump's approach and his insistence uh, that things that are true are false relates to the way he's uh, allegedly abusing the powers of the executive to control who has access to information to legitimize who can speak about national security and who can't, which dovetails back uh, with the security clearance story. For your reaction, take a look at Sarah Sanders on that. Is Russia still targeting the U.S., Mr. President? Thank Press, you let's go. Time. Make your way out. No, you don't want that to be the case? I had a chance to speak with the president after uh, his comments, and the president was said thank you very much and was saying no to answering questions. Yeah, 
president is exploring these mechanisms to resume. Uh, remove security clearance because they've politicized and in some cases actually monetized their public service and their security cleanse clearances and making baseless accusations of improper contact with Russia or being influenced by Russia against the president is extremely inappropriate. Steve. Ari, it's not just that there's no other spokesperson for the executive seat of power in a democratic republic anywhere in the world where you see that type of lying. It's that there has never been a spokesperson for the executive seat in power who is such a prolific liar as Sarah Sanders. She is straight out of Baghdad, Bob. Uh, it, it's truly remarkable the magnitude of her daily, her daily lying. But look, this is all part of a political strategy, and I've talked about it before. Trump uses mass rallies and constant lying to incite fervor in a political base. Two, he scapegoats minority populations and casts them to be blamed for every problem in the world. Three, he allows for his supporters to feel victimized, to feel victimized by the scapegoated populations. Everyone is a victim in Trump nation by design. It's part of the fuel. Uh, the last thing is the conspiracy, the coordination of the conspiracy between the deep state, the nefarious sources, the people when he talked about, for example, uh, Clapper, someone got to him yesterday. And then lastly, the assertion that Trump is above the law by Trump himself, that Trump defines what is reality, that Trump defines what's truth, and that Trump asserts heretofore unasserted un, 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 un powers for the executive in the United States that, that have never been asserted in history before. I mean, these five things are happening. They're happening on a daily basis. The assault on the press, on the free media. We still have a First Amendment in this country, but he is as hostile to the free media as any president has ever been and any president could conceivably be in the United States. And so all of these things together are not isolated. It's part of a pattern. It's part of a strategy. And it's going to do grave damage to American democracy. And this is a moment in time where Republican leaders who have been complicit, have been silent, have been cowardice, are called on to defend the institutions, not of conservatism, not of the small L liberalism that the Democratic Party embraces, but the fundamental pillars of a liberal democratic society, which he is weakening every day. Right. And that's the connection, as you draw it, uh, between the, the assault on facts, the potential abuse of government power, and the undermining of the rule of law. Of course, it is law that ultimately is the way we adjudicate certain factual debates in this country. All of those things happening together. Steve Schmidt, thank you so much for joining The Beat tonight. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.